The terms of a geometric series grow rapidly when the common ratio is greater than 1. Uh, when it's, our ratio is greater than 1, we have exponential growth. When the common ratio is between 1 and 0, the terms diminish rapidly. Therefore, when we have an infinite geometric series with a decay factor, remember our common ratio between 0 and 1 gives us exponential decay, uh, we can find the finite sum. So even though it's an infinite series, which means it goes on and on and on, we can find the finite sum because pretty soon it uh, gets to values that are close enough to zero that when we add them on, they don't really change our value. So take note on page 597 is infinite geometric series. An infinite geometric series with a first term, a sub 1, and common ratio uh, with the absolute value less than 1 has a finite sum. Our sum is going to be our first value divided by 1 minus r. Um, and that's because the r to the nth power is going to get close enough to a 0 to not really matter. So 1 minus 0 was 1 times a sub 1. So our usual formula and again as we plug in bigger and bigger numbers for n r sub n it approaches 0 which means it gets really really close to 0 we like point zero 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 one or something like that. But one minus that, eventually our calculators are just gonna tell us it's one because it's too close to one to be able to round. Um and so we're just gonna go with this is one. Because one minus zero is one. And anything times one is itself. So we get a, a sub 1 over 1 minus r. Um, we call this convergence. So we say that it converges to a number s as n gets very large. Okay, An infinite geometric series with the absolute value r uh, greater than or equal to 1 does not have a finite sum and is said to diverge as n gets very large. Um, Converge versus diverge. Uh, one way to think about it, guys, divergent, the movie, means that they don't fit into one of the factions or something like that. Uh, for those of you that have seen it, the same thing here. It doesn't go to one value. Okay, it doesn't stop at one value. Diverges. Keeps going. Uh, we can't find out because every time it can keep being multiplied and it gets bigger. Okay, when we're doing with exponential growth. But with decay, it eventually goes to zero and it converges. Example 3 is analyzing finite geometric series. Does the series converge or diverge? If it converges, what is the sum? So first thing we need to do here is figure out our common ratio. So from 1 to a half means we multiplied by a half. Half to a fourth, we multiplied by a half. So our ratio is one half. Guys, if you're not sure how I got that, I took one half divided by one. Again, we multiply by the reciprocal, which is still just one, excuse me, one half. I took one fourth divided by one half. To divide fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal. Give me 2 over 4, which is 1 half. Okay? Or we can look. My numerator multiplied by 1 because it stayed the same times 1. My denominator, 1 to 2 is times 2. 2 to 4 is times 2. So 1 over 2. Okay? Uh, now that I know my common ratio, I can find my sum. Since this uh, r is a half, it converges. 
because it's less than one. My sum then is going to be my first term divided by one minus r. My first term is one divided by one minus r half. One minus a half is a half. And when we multiply by a reciprocal here, we get two. So our sum is going to be two. B e here. Uh, if we look, first term, common ratio. And the absolute value of negative 5 fourths is greater than 1, which means this is going to diverge. It's not going to go to one specific value because we can keep multiplying and it'll keep getting uh, smaller and smaller. Now, same thing here. Uh, does the infinite series di converge or diverge? If it converges, what is the sum? So here we need to find our common ratio. From 1 to 3, I times 3. From 3 to 9, I times 3. From 2 to 4, I times 2. And 4 to 8, I times 2. Which means my common ratio is every time I'm multiplying by 3 over 2 which is greater than 1, which means this diverges. And when it diverges, we cannot find the sum. B. To go from 1 to 1, we multiply by 1, times 1, times 1, every time. 3 to 9. We multiply by 3, and we change signs, so it's a negative. Multiplied by negative 3 again. Multiplied by negative 3 again. So our r value is negative 1 third. Our signs alternate plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, which means it's negative every time we're multiplying by a negative, um, and it's 1 third. Absolute value here is going to be 1 third, which is less than 1, which means... converges instead of diverges it converges so our sum is going to be our first value divided by 1 minus our common ratio and our common ratio is negative one third so I end up adding there 1 plus a third is 4 thirds and to get rid of division with fractions I multiply by the reciprocal. 3 goes to the top, 4 to the bottom. And I get 1 fourth. Last one here. The number inside my exponential it's my r, it's my common ratio. And it's 2 thirds, which is less than 1, which means it's going to converge. And we can find our sum. So our sum is going to be our first term. We need to find our first term here. So we take 2 thirds, first power, which gives us just 2 thirds. And we divide by 1 minus our common ratio, 2 thirds. 1 minus 2 thirds, we can rewrite this if we want to as 3 over 3. Common denominator is 3. Subtract 3 minus 2, we get 1 third. Again, to get rid of division with fractions, we switch to multiplication and take our reciprocal. 
So instead of being 1 over 3, it's going to be 3 over 1. Cross cancel our 3's because 3 divided by multiplying fractions, we multiply straight across. 3 divided by 3 is 1, and we end up with 2. Quick recap here. Just as with finite arithmetic series, the sum of a finite geometric series can be found using a formula. It's necessary to know the first term, the number of terms, and the common ratio. A geometric sequence can be modeled explicitly or recursively. The sum of the first n terms is sum of our first n terms is our first term times 1 minus our common ratio to the number of terms power divided by 1 over the common ratio. And here is your assignment. This is the last section in this chapter that we're doing. Um, so this will be our last assignment for chapter 9.